Shalom, Israel. Shalom. Royal regime of Christ Church, Brother Aaron, all praises to the Most High. Today we're going to be discussing the topic, we must separate from the nations. That's right. As Israel, we must separate from these nations, mainly spiritual. We have to begin to disassociate in every way, whether it's political, spiritual, philosophy. We have to leave what we've learned from these nations and solely cling to what the Bible tells us, what the Most High gives us. Okay, so that's what we're going to be discussing today. We're going to jump straight into it. By the way, we're going to be studying from our King James Version Bible and our authorized King James Version Apocrypha. Those are the two sources we're going to be studying from today. First place we're going is Isaiah chapter 1, verse 3. The book of Isaiah chapter 1, verse 3. And when you get it, go ahead and read it. Huh? The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib. Ox is a very dumb animal. It's, it's strictly for work. Okay, as you know, if you have anything about a farm, you know, it's used to pull, haul things. Okay, it says the ox even knows its master creed. It knows where it belongs. It knows its function. Come on. But Israel don't know, not know. My people do not consider. But Israel do not know. My people do not consider. Okay, so the ox Animal, everything knows its proper place, but it says, Israel, my people, do not consider. We don't know our God. We don't know how we're supposed to be functioning. Let's get a precept. Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 7. Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 7. Jeremiah 8, verse 7. When you get it, AJ, you go ahead and read this one. Yea, the stork in the heaven knoweth her appointed times, and the turtle and the crane and the swallow observes the time of their coming. But my people know not the judgment of the Lord. You see that? The stork knoweth her appointed times, and the turtle and the crane. These are fowls that are at different birds. Everything within the Most High's universe operates exactly how it was created to function. Okay, during a certain time of year when it starts to get cold, they know exactly how to migrate to warmer climates. Every, every single thing that the Most High created knows exactly its purpose and its function. Okay, yeah, the stork in heaven know the appointed times and the turtle and the crane and the swallow observe the time of their coming. But my people, once again, but my people know it not the judgment of the Lord. So when it comes to us as a nation, and saying everything else knows how to operate, know exactly what it was created for. But us, Israel, as a nation of people, we're the only ones lost and confused about who our God is. What are we supposed to be following? What are we supposed to be keeping? What philosophies? What laws? What commandments? How are we supposed to live? Okay, because you're going to find in this lesson we are to be separate. The Lord never intended us to be equal to. Everything that you see in the media, the news, that we... You know, fight so hard for back from the civil rights move all the way up to today. Going all the way back from slavery to be equal in this society, in this country, equal amongst our oppressors. The Lord never intended that. Okay, you're going to find out exactly our purpose, our place, according to the Bible. From now, we're going to our apocrypha, the book of Sirach, chapter 17, verse 17. When you get it, go ahead and read it. For in the division of the nations of the whole earth, he set a ruler over every people. Okay, in the divisions of the whole earth. So the most high divide. You can even go back, I believe, to Genesis 10 in the Bible, the Tower of Babel. Okay, when he came, he sent the angel down from heaven to divide the tongue in 70 different languages. Okay, it says, for in the divisions of the nations of the whole earth, he set a ruler over every people. Every nation or race of people has its own ruler, meaning its own God. Okay, finish that up. But Israel is the Lord's portion. But Israel is the Lord's portion. So back to what I was saying, every nation within this earth has its own laws, its own uh, rules, its own God and follow. For example, if you're Chinese, Asiatic persuasion, anything like that, predominantly the Chinese people God is who? Buddha. 
Okay, same with your East Indians or your Arabs. You have Krishna, Allah. They, they, all, they are not confused about who their God is, who they're supposed to be served. Okay, European. Okay, you have Christianity or what we know as Central Borgia, a.k.a. White Jesus, the lawless Christ, who supposedly came to take away all laws and commandments and believe on him by faith. Okay? In the divine of the nations, each people has their own God and their own ruler. It says, but the Lord, Israel, is the Lord's portion. We belong to the most high God of the Bible. And along with that comes his rules, his regulations, his laws, his statutes, and commandments. Okay? Buddha works for the Chinese people. Uh, Krishna, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, Isis, Osiris, uh, uh, what are they got? Uh, uh, Allah, that works for the East Indian Arabian people. Sunday worship, Christian, white Jesus works for the European. And it's quite obvious. Okay? These other nations, they, they give pay homage and uh, praise and to their deities, to their God. If you go to these Asiatic restaurants, the chicken and rice and things like that, you look in the corner. Okay, they always got a little altar, some set up with Buddha. If you, if you look, it'll be a Buddha with a little tray. They'll have like a little, whether well, it's money or food or whatever. That's, those are the rules and regulations that that particular God, Buddha, requires of them. And as a whole, I mean, if you take, you may have one or two straight, you know, dudes worship different gods, but as a whole, 90, 95% of them are on the same page. They are one accord when it comes to worshiping that God. Therefore, that God, that demon or whatever it is, that entity, because it's not the most high God. We can show you in a minute, there are many gods, but it's only one true God. Okay, but whatever that deity or that God is, because they operate the way that God requires, that deity or that God blesses those people. Okay? That's why they're able to succeed in things like that within the nation. They hold true to what their God or their deity requires of them. Same with your East India, your Chinese, your, uh, of course, the European. Okay? Sunday worship, white Jesus, that law, no law, that works for them. That's not for us as a nation, as a people. And it's obvious. Because all the way from slavery up until now, you've seen the condition, the state of our people in general. Still at the bottom of society. Why? Because we pay homage and we operate under everything but according to what our God gave us. Okay? Our God is the most high God of Israel. <clears throat> from there, uh, go ahead and read that one more time. Verse 17. Verse 17. For in the division of the nations of the whole earth, he set a ruler over every people, but Israel is the Lord's portion. Every other people got a ruler set over him, but Israel, we are the Lord's portion. So we have to operate according to how the Lord of the Bible told us to operate. From now, let's go to Jeremiah chapter 2, I'm on verse 11. Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 11. And when you get it, go ahead and read it. Hath a nation changed their God, which are yet no God? The Lord is asking a question. Have the other nations changed their God, which yet are no God? They're not even real gods, but yet they still hold true and faithful to those gods. Come on. But my people have changed their glory for that which God no, do not profit. You see that? But my people, talking about us, Israel has changed their glory. We've changed our God for that which do not profit. Profit. And it's clear it has not profited us. What we've been doing all the way since we've been in this country as slaves up until now, as a whole, has not profited our people. Worshiping the wrong God on the wrong days, keeping no laws, no commandments, and you see, you clearly see the ultimate. You see the fact. Alright? Let's go to Amos chapter 3, verse 2. The book of Amos, chapter 3, verse 2. Because you're going to find when we're obedient to what our God requires, we're blessed. When we're not obedient, he disciplines us or punishes us. And it's clear as a nation, we have not been blessed compared to the other nations. And this is the reason why. Amos chapter 3 verse 2. When you get it, pass the way You only have I known of all the families of the earth. See that? You only, talking about Israel, have I known, meaning we're the only ones got his laws, statutes, and commandments. 
Come on. Therefore I will punish you for all your iniquities. Therefore I will what? But therefore I will punish you for all your iniquities. You see that? The Lord says you only of all of all the nations you only have I known. Therefore I will punish you for your iniquities. That's why we can't operate like the other nations. We can't serve the other nations God and expect to be blessed. You take our people, you serve Buddha, you're not going to have the same blessings, businesses, prosperity, or, and money, and things that the Chinese people have. Same with Allah. Same with uh, uh, Sesha Borgia, a.k.a. White Jesus, Sunday worship, all of those things. It has not worked for us, and it's clear. That's why the Lord is closing down the pagan churches. Now you're almost forced to hear the true teachers and prophets. That has not worked for us. He says that all the families of earth have you known only, therefore I will punish you for your iniquities. That's why when we break the laws, okay, like they've taught us in these Christian churches, all that's done away with, you don't have to do that. We remain cursed at the bottom. They continue to flourish, even though we're more faithful to their Sunday worship God than they are. Who's more religious and faithful? Christianity, Sunday worship, than black people? Nobody. No other race, no, we're more faithful to white Jesus than they are. And he looks like them, but yet we remain at the bottom, they remain on the top. How do you explain it? <clears throat> First Samuel chapter 8. You're going to 1 Samuel chapter 8. Because you're going to find that, that all the way back from the beginning, we always want to be like other nations. Okay, whatever the other races, the other nations did, we want to be just like them. Even though the Lord said, I sit you on top above all people, that's not good enough. We want to do exactly what everybody else do. And we're paying the price to this day. 1 Samuel chapter 8. And I want verses 5 through 7. 1 Samuel chapter 8, 5 through 7. Go ahead, Jesus. And he said unto him, Behold. Real, real quick, let me explain what's happening before we even get to it, okay? You had basically Samuel, who was a priest over Israel. Okay, Samuel was at his old age now. He had had two sons who were supposed to follow in his footsteps to be the leaders over the nation of Israel. Okay, but the people complained against Samuel's sons. They said that they, they complaint was, your sons are not righteous like you. They're not walking in the ways of the Lord like you. So we reject your sons. Okay, they were kind of wicked or whatever like that, so they didn't want Samuel's sons. Okay, so they said, give us a king. We want a king over us like all the other nations, even though the Most High said, I am your king. I am your God. Every other race of people on the earth, the different nations and tribes, they had a man as a leader. Or a king. The Most High didn't want us to operate like that. He said, I'll be your king, your leader. But the people, they refused that. They didn't want that. They rejected it. They said, no, we want to be like every other nation. We want a man over us. We want a king over us. Okay, so the Lord is going to give them what they want. But let, let's just read that and see. So even back then, we always wanted to be like everybody else. Go ahead. And said unto him, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk not in thy ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. You see that? Make us a king to judge us like all the other nations. Come on. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people and all that they say unto thee. For they have not rejected thee. But they have rejected me. You see that? So the people out there, the people say, no, we don't want we, we don't want the Lord to rule over us. We want a king. We want a man like all other nations. The Lord said, okay, since y'all so adamant, that's what you want. He told Samuel, he said, no, listen to him. Find him a king. Find him a man to go. And then you continue to read the story for yourself, and you see how they turned out for our people. Okay, they got Saul. Saul ended up enslaving a lot of them. Everything they worked for, he took for himself. A lot of the women being ended up concubines, it was horrible. It was horrible, why? Because we rejected what our God gave us. We wanted to be like everybody else, every other group, every other nation, every other race. We wanted a man to lead us instead of the Lord. And believe it or not, we're doing the exact same thing today. You can see it every four years, even in politics. We fall for the same lot. Every four years, they target our communities for the black vote, and we, we, we take the bait. 
You know, hook, hook, hook and sinker. We take it every time. We fall for it. And as a whole, a lot of us who woke and conscious and know what this book says, no, we won't fall for it, but the majority of our people, we chase right behind the nations. I mean, this is when will we wake up? It's just sad. It's a shame. From now, we're going to Leviticus chapter 20. Leviticus chapter 20. Because what works for everybody else does not work. The Lord said, I made you holy, separate, and above all nations. We can't operate like everybody else and expect to be blessed and all of it. It does not work like that for our nation. Leviticus chapter 20. I want 22 through 26. And when you get it, AJ, you go ahead and read. Ye shall therefore keep all my statutes and all of my judgments and do them. That the land, whether I bring you to the well, there and spew you not out. You see that? So even in back then, he told our people, okay, you shall therefore keep all the statutes and my judgments. And do them that the land did not spring you up. Talking about back before we went in the land of Canaan. The Lord, he kicked out all the pagan heathen nations. Made a covenant with us and brought us into the land. But he warned us. He said the things that they did, the way they operated in these nations. Worshiping uh, deities, false gods, uh, committing adultery, uh, uh, just sin, and all the abominations. Uh, uh, worshiping on the wrong days, murder, theft. He said, all of those things you should not do lest the land spew you out. Clearly showing you, we from the beginning, we were never supposed to follow behind and operate like the other nations. Okay, pick up where you left off. Verse 22. 22. He showed that. Come on. You not out. Let me see. Verse 22. Where are you at? Verse 22. Just pick it up in uh, 23. What's that? 20. Go ahead, pick it up at 22 again. Go ahead. Spear you not out. Yes. Oh, ye shall therefore keep all my statutes and all my judgments, and do them, that the land, whether I bring you to the well there, and, and spew you not out. Okay, we supposed to keep the statutes and judgment that the Most High gave us, so the same thing happened to the nations, they got spewed out, won't happen to us. 23, go ahead. 23, and ye shall not walk in the manners of the nations. See that? You should not walk in the same manner as the nations. Come on. Which I cast out before you. Before you. Come on. For they committed all these things, and Therefore, I abhor Because they committed all these things, therefore I abhorred them, meaning I hated them. Mm -hmm. He was very displeased. He detested them. Come on, verse 24. But I have said unto you, ye shall inherit their land, and I will give it unto you to possess it. It and a land that followed, floweth with milk and honey. I am the Lord your God, which hath separated you from okay. other. Jump to verse 26 now. Just read verse 26. And ye shall be holy unto me. Ye shall be holy unto me. This is what the Lord told us. Come on. For I, the Lord, am holy and have served you from other people. Have separated you from other people. That's what he said. Servitude means I have separated you from other people that ye should be mine. Okay, so all the way back here, the Lord is showing us from the beginning. Okay, we're not to operate like the other nations. The Lord separated us from the other nations because remember what we had read back, I think it was Sarah 17, 17? Israel is the Lord's portion. He said, I've separated you from the other people that you should be mine. All right, from now, let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 18 and I want verse 9. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 9. You get it, as you go ahead. When thou art coming into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. See that? When we came into the land, the Lord told us you should not do or operate after the abominations of the other nations. Same thing. Same thing to this day. 
And what applies to them does not apply to us. Okay, that's why they've taught you so long, okay, that's done, or you don't keep the order at all, no commandment, but they just believe. Why? Because that works for them. That works against us. Okay, from now, let's jump down. Uh, I'll tell you what, let's go to, give me uh, Proverbs 31, and, I'm sorry, Proverbs 3, verse 31. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 31. When you get it, read. Envy thou not the oppressor, and choose none of his ways. You see that? Envy not the oppressor, and choose none of his ways. Envy not talking about you shouldn't want to be like your oppressor. You shouldn't want to be like them, and choose none of his ways. None of his ways meaning the way he functions in society, the way he operates. Everything from his spiritual beliefs, his political views, his ideologies, his philosophies. We're not supposed to choose any of his ways. Why? Because we're separate people. The Most High gave us to himself. Let's go to Lamentations chapter 4, verse 17. Lamentations in between uh, Jeremiah and Ezekiel. As for us, our eyes as yet failed for our vain help. And our watching, we have watched for a nation that could not save us. You see that? Now this is going right back into, uh, you can use politics with this, the election. It says, as for us, our eyes has yet failed us for our vain help. And our watching, we have watched for a nation that could not save us. Okay, there you go. That's your vote, your politics. We still wait, we still trust, and we still believe in a nation that cannot save us. It's not going to help us. They promise us the same lives every four years. Okay, we was the last thing, the black community as a whole. We so adamant about getting Trump out. So adamant. I'm not for Trump or by both sides. It's two, two dirty feathers on the same bird. They're both working together. They're both against God's people. They're both against Israel. Okay? So it says, we watch for a nation that cannot save us. In vain, we watch for a nation. Every fall, how, how often or how much are we going to continue to fall for the same trick over and over? That's what it's saying. We've got to begin to pull ourselves, pull our energy out of this system. Okay, everything from their polls, when it comes to voting, their politics, to the Sunday worship, to their holidays. Okay, once when we stop celebrating all these things, we start operating like the Lord told us, keeping his days instead of the, the, the days of our oppressors and things like that, their system continues to crumble. Okay, that's mainly what you see going on in the earth. The more God's people are waking up and we're coming back to what we're supposed to be following, we're pulling that in. You gotta understand, y'all, everything is spiritual. Everything before it manifests itself in the physical, it takes place in the spiritual. So the more of us wake up and begin to call on our God and operate based on what he's given us, in the natural, you begin to see the effects. Yeah, everything you got to understand is spiritual first, then physical. Okay, we wake up, we come to our God, like I was saying, to operate in a way in the law, statutes, commandments that he gave us. You see what starts to take place in the natural realm. This is why the society is falling. Okay, and in order, you can't have two ruling empires at one time. In order for Christ's kingdom to come on this earth and set up his people, the current system has to fall. Same way, Pharaoh and Egypt. Pharaoh went down before the neck, before the Greeks and the Romans could rule and all of that. One empire has to fall. Okay, and then this is what you see manifested in the earth. Let's go to Proverbs 11, verse 21. Because this is very critical that we separate ourselves from this all. Okay, the Lord's judgment, as you clearly see within the earth, is slowly coming on. Slowly coming on. The wall, you know, they got these different uh, strands and varies of everything from COVID to, you know, uh, we're starting to see prices gouge, inflation, 
Home and strike things is getting harder and harder and harder. The beginning of Jacob's trouble. We have old lessons to talk about that. And you're starting to see, it's almost like every week, every month, you're starting to feel it more and more and more. And I don't care what the news tell you, whatever, it's not going to get better. It's going to only get worse because it's prophesied. Okay? So all of us who think it's cool, you know, you want to be like the other nations, you want to cling to them, you want to operate under their doctrines, their philosophies, you want to keep continuing to worship their God in their pagan days. When they fall, when the judgment comes on them, guess what? Because you link with them, you're going to face the same judgment that they face. Okay, this is Proverbs chapter 11, verse 21. When you get it, read. The hand join in hand, the wicked shall not be unpunished. But the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. You see that? Go hand, join in hand. Go you join hand with them. You want to link with them. You want to have the same philosophies, the same spiritual views, same ideologies. Okay, say the wicked won't go unpunished. If you join hands with them, you're going to get the same judgment they get. Okay, we have to separate ourselves from these people. You have to. Revelations. Chapter 18, verse 4. When you get it, go in. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people. Saying what? Come out of her, my people. Come on. That he may not part be partakers of her sins. And that he received not of her plagues. You see that? This is a revelation. The angel of the Lord. This is what he's telling us. Come out of her, my people. Come out of her, my people. That ye be not partakers of her sins. You see that? Meaning the same sins that she operated in. That's about to bring the same plagues and the same judgments. That you saw in the slowly see pour out on this earth. Unless you come out of her. You're going to face the same judgment. Okay, idolatry, false worship, wrong days, all of that, wrong God, that is considered idolatry according to the Bible. But of course you wouldn't know that if they've taught us, don't worry about the law. Stay out of the Old Testament. How do you even know what sin is unless you're able to go to the law and read what violates your God? All this is meticulously done by our enemies to keep us confused, keep us lost. Now, the more the Lord turns the heat up on his wrath and his judgment starts to plague this earth, the more confused our people are. What's going on? Should we do this? Should we do that? Should we take this? Should we take that? Should we not? It's a bunch of confusion. The Lord is not the author of confusion. Why? Because we've listened to the wrong thing so many generations, for so many centuries. To now we, as a whole, as a nation, the majority of our people are in a complete state of confusion. And the answer has been right here the whole time. Just for whatever reason, we refuse to listen. Read it one more time. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her. Come my out people. of her, my people. Come out of her religion. Come out of her false churches. Come out of Sunday worship. Drop white Jesus. Drop Buddha. Drop your, uh, all this African hair, these crystals, these stones. That, that's getting so big right now amongst our people, especially black women. All these crystals and stones and uh, what's some of the other stuff that's big right Praying now? Praying to the ancestors. Praying to the ancestors. Thank you. All that type of stuff. The Lord never gave us that. That's what he's saying. Come out of my people. Take your energy out of this political system. If we only, according to them, we're only, what, 12, 13% of the total population? Why are they so focused and adamant on the black vote? Why? Why are you so worried about the black vote, but yet, election after election, when they get in office or when the black vote put them in office, they don't do a darn thing. They don't do a darn thing for black people. They'll do something for everybody else, every other minority group. And you see how they play? They use these uh, big, ambiguous, they use certain terms, such as minority. Okay, but you got to understand, Everybody, except, everybody besides a non-white man falls under the minority group. A white woman is considered a minority. <laughs> Asian, Chinese, homosexuals, LGBT, all of those are considered minorities. So when they get in office, yeah, they hold true to their promise. They take care of the minorities, just not you. Just not our people. Every other minority gets something. 
This man biting already with his end of his first oh, okay. office. Uh, how many executive orders? Oh, over 40. Over 40 executive orders in the first week. And none of them have nothing to do with black people. <laughs> Every other minority, he's taking care of. You can, he got executive orders for LGBT, homosexuals, transgenders, uh, uh, Mexicans, uh, illegal. The dark law, all of that. He even got not even legal citizens. But nothing for black people. But yet they cater so hard to get the black vote, and you fall for it every time. Take your energy out of the system. This is what he's saying. Come out of her people. Come out of her, my people. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that he be not partakers of her sins, and that he receive not of her place. See that? Unless you come out of her, the same judgment that's coming on this place, you're going to be partakers of her sins. This is what the Lord is telling our people. Drop it. Take your energy. Even the education system, they're so confused right now. Like, come on, man. In the midst of a pandemic, who you send the kids to school? Don't send them to school. Why the hell are you sending them? If it's a, such a pandemic, why are you sending them to go get infected? Like, come on, wake up. Take your energy out of the system. We have to begin to trust in the Most High and operate as a nation among ourselves the best we can. And He'll help us. This is what it's saying. We have to come out of her lest we partake in the same sins and plagues as the world, as this nation. Mm -hmm. From now, uh, Revelation chapter 7 and our own verses 1 through 4. Revelation 7, 1 through 4. Because it's something we wait for, and you guys were about to read. And once the Lord does this, once he seals, it's the last number of that man or woman, that Israelite who's supposed to wake up and come to the Most High. And the second that happened, it's all, the judgment has not hit this earth yet, I'm telling you. The second that last one, it could be you watching the video, well, when that last Israelite wake up to who he is, repent of his sins, drop his paganism, and come back to the Most High God of Israel, all bets off. That's what we're about to read right now. Revelations in chapter 7 of uh, one through four, when you get it read. And after these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea. Okay, the four winds that the angels are holding back, the winds represent destruction. And that's what the Lord said. Four angels holding back the four winds of destruction. Saying, not yet, not yet. It's something we waiting for. Before the Lord can release his full fury, the judgment upon this earth is something that we wait for. Somebody we wait to be sealed. We about to read what that is. Come on. Nor are any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, uh, uh, Read that again, verse 3. Saying, hurt, hurt not the earth nor the sea. So he's telling the four angels that's holding back the four winds of destruction. Okay, I don't want you to touch the earth, the land, or the sea. But he's going to tell you who this is for. Come on. Verse 3 saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God. Till we have did what? Until we have sealed the servants of our God. So hold back. Hurt not the, the, the earth, the land, or the trees until we have sealed the full servants of our God. Okay, so we're waiting for the Most High. The Most High is still a certain number that he has to put his seal on, elect. That means you woke up to who you are. Your true heritage is an Israelite, you repented. You put away the paganism, the adultery, the fornication, the sin, everything that this world has taught us. And the Most High has put his seal on you. Go ahead. Till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. Come on. And I heard the number of them which were sealed. And there were sealed in hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Of all the tribes of who? Of the children of Israel. Okay, this is the book of Revelation telling you. He's telling the angels, hold back the destruction until we have sealed the full number of the servants of God. One hundred and forty-four thousand of the children of Israel. Okay, showing the two Israelites a certain number of our people that the Lord is waiting on to get this truth, to wake up. Once that last number, and we don't know how far off we are from there, once that last number is sealed, 
the judgment of the Lord, the full judgment will hit this earth like you've never seen before. Right now, what you're seeing is just, it is trickling of Jacob's trouble at the very tip of the iceberg right now. Every year, I mean, we have people we couldn't wait to get out of 2020. For what? 2021, only much more, much more, judge, much more play, much more this. It might, yeah, they go clear it up for a little bit. They won't make Joe Biden look like he's the savior. Numbers of Corona gonna go down. And, you know, the uh, economy might look like it's coming back. That's not the case. Don't believe it. Do not believe it. It might look better for a short period of time, but it's not. It, it, from here, baby, it only gets worse. So the only thing we can do is call on, cling to the God of Israel. Find out the laws, command, and start operating like our God told us to operate. All right? From there, uh, let's go to Ezekiel chapter 9. We're going to read verses 4 through 6. And we're going to read about the same thing. How the Lord, this is a certain number. Once he gets sealed, all bets are off. Ezekiel chapter 9, I'm on verses 4 through 6. When you get it, read. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. You see that? The Lord told his angel, I want you to go out the midst of city of Jerusalem and set a mark, similar to the same mark we just read in Revelation 7, his seal. Set it up all the foreheads of them who sigh and cry for the abominations of this land. Meaning, sigh and cry for the abominations of this land, meaning they're against the wickedness. They're against the sin. They're against the paganism, the idolatry, the false worship, the transgender, uh, the homosexuals. Uh, the, the, all the freak show and abominations that you see walking around here. Six foot hairy men with beards with wigs every time you turn on the television. Can't send his kids to school no more without him talking about a gay agenda or trying to turn your kids gay. Can't even watch cartoons no more without subliminal message by homosexuals or, or sodomites. Okay, this is what he's talking about. I want you to seal all these people that have my word that's righteous, who know they're against this, this foolishness. It grieves your spirit to wake up every day and just walk in a world full of just this, this, this abominations and, and foolish, a freak show. One big world of a freak show we in right now, Twilight Zone. He says, seal these people, he grieves their spirit. They hate this, they hate the wickedness. Come on, pick up where you left off. And to the others, he said, in mine hearing, Go ye after him through the city and smite. Let not your eyes spare, neither have ye pity. You see that? Now to everybody else, everybody else who still bind into this system, who ain't repenting, who still want to fall off the ways of this world, say, I want you to go and smite him. Come on. Slay utterly old and young. Slay who? Slay utterly old and young. Old men, women, children, and babies. Come on. Both maids and little children. Come on. And women. But come not near any man upon whom is the mark. Come not who? And, but come not near any man upon whom is the mark. Don't touch my people who never pity to call on the God of Israel who have my mark. Come on. And begin in my sanctuary. Then they begin at the... I'm sorry, Salakia. Then they begin at the ancient men which were before the house. Okay, start at my sanctuary. So start at the ones who are supposed to believe in the elderly. The old men. Why? Because you're the examples. You're the one supposed to be teaching the women and children passed on down. Start at them. Okay, there's no coincidence. Even if you look at what's going on in the earth right now with the whole, you know, the vaccination thing, COVID, there's no coincidence they talking our elderly first. No coincidence. The most vulnerable elderly and minorities. That's what we just read right here. Start at my sanctuary, the ancient of days, talking about the elderly. From now, Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 12. And we're going to get into what we're supposed to be following. Because if there's one person out there, we're in a video. The Lord just spoke to at this point. And like, okay, so what do we need to do? The Lord's going to tell you. We know that other stuff we've been operating in this society, the ways of the nations, that does not work for us. As long as we do that, we're under the curse. Okay, so now we're going to see what the Lord gave to his people, Israel. Deuteronomy <clears throat> Chapter 10, and I want verse 12. And AJ, you're going to read this one. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 12, when you get it, read. And I stayed in the mount according to the first time. No, 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 where you at? 
Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 12. Go ahead. And now, Israel. And now, Israel, talking to Israel, come on, what do you say? What doth the Lord thy God require of thee? What do the Lord thy God require of thee? What do the Lord require his people, Israel? Let's find out. Come on. But to fear the, the Lord thy God to walk in all his ways and to love him and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Okay, how do you do that? How do you walk in his ways? How do you fear him? How do you serve him with all thy heart and soul? Next verse, come on, how do you do that? To keep the commandments. To keep what? To keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes. Come on. Which I command thee this day for thy, for thy good. You see that? That's what the Lord requires of his people. That's what he requires of us, Israel. To keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes which I require thee this day for thy good. This is why they've taught us and programmed us in these pagan Christian churches. Don't read the Old Testament. Stay out of Christ. What sense of that, man? Y'all know that, man. Nothing, no, no society, no kingdom, no people on this earth operates without a law, without a code, without a rules. We the only ones off code that don't have rules. That's why we're in the condition we're in. If I was your oppressor, if I was over you, I would tell you the same thing. Why? Because I want to keep my foot on your neck. This is why they program us. Why do you think the only black man to this day got a national holiday, Martin Luther King? He might have meant well, but that was garbage when he taught you to be equal with your oppressors. We want to be equal. You never were supposed to be equal to these people. We only here to serve out our captivity, our punishment for a certain time until the Lord free us and put up, make our enemies our footstool. That's what we waiting on. That's the reason we're here. Not to be equal with these people. That's like somebody living in your house. Like I, I've said before, somebody living in your, you let somebody stay in your garage, they protested in your living room saying, well, we want to be equal with you, your living room. It don't work like that. From now, Deuteronomy 4, chapter 4, I want verses 5 and 6. Deuteronomy chapter 4, Verse 5 and 6. When you get it, son, you glory be. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments. I have taught you what? Statutes and judgments. Come on. Even as the Lord my God commanded me, that ye should do so in the land whether ye go to possess it. Come on. Keep therefore and do them. For this is your wisdom and your understanding. In the sight of the nations. This is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations. You see that? The Lord made this our wisdom. Not the philosophy, the wisdom, and the knowledge, the education, the stuff of this world, of our oppressors. This is our wisdom in the sight of the nations. Come on. In the sight of the nations, which shall ye which shall hear all these statues and all and say, Surely this great nation is a law is a wise and understanding people. You see that? The other nations are supposed to look at us because we operate in the laws of our God and say, surely this is a wise and understanding people. Surely these people are special. Surely they're different. They don't operate like nobody else. They got their own statutes, their own laws, their commandments, worship on their own days, separate from the rest of the world. There's something about these people. That's how they're supposed to look at us. But instead, because we want to be like them, worship everybody else, God, remain on the bottom, they still treat us like crap. Still buying from them, patronizing their stores, their businesses. Hurry up and buy. Hurry up and buy. Calling the cops on you. You support them. Wake up, Israel. Wake up. This is what the Lord is trying to tell us. That the end of that? Mm -hmm. All right, let's finish this off. Deuteronomy chapter 7. I want verse 6, showing you we were never supposed to be equal to these people. How are you going to be equal to something that the Lord intended you to be better than? Every other race of people teach their children from a young age, you better, you better, you better. We're the only ones, you know better, no worse. <laughs> that ain't what the Lord said about Israel. Deuteronomy chapter 7, give me verse 6. Uh, Jack, you get it, you are reading for thou art an holy people. Thou who? For thou art an holy people. Come on. Unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself 
above all people that are on the face of the earth. No, oh, below. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Equal to. Above all people that are up on the face of the earth. The Lord said you are above all people that are on the face of the earth. But that above is only when we come back and we operate according to the laws and commandments that our God gave us. That's the only time we're above. Until the end, we will remain on bottom and beneath. So I'll close that out with saying we have to separate ourselves spiritually, uh, politically, take your energy out of this system and bring it back to the God of Israel. With that, I want to say shalom. Until next time, we are.